Hello there guys and welcome to this video about one of our favourite cruise liners, Royal Caribbean. Yeah, we're going to be looking at everything from the cabins, the entertainment on board and the classes of ship up to the drinks packages to see if Royal Caribbean's the one for you. Yeah, so let's get on with the show. Royal Caribbean are the second largest cruise liner and we feel one of the most well known. They have seven different classes of ship and depending on the ship you choose can offer you a completely different holiday experience. So first, let's take a look at the Sovereign class. The Sovereign class of ship are Royal Caribbean's oldest class and these were built in the early 90s. They hold around 2,300 passengers. They're known for having some of the smallest staterooms at sea so if you're looking for something with a bit more room, another class of ship may be for you. Missing many of the features of the larger and newer ships, we feel that this class is better suited to shorter cruises or those looking for a bargain. They do have charm though, but they don't have as many dining options as the rest of the fleet. These ships do, however, rate highly with Royal Caribbean customers. So the Vision class ships are the smallest at sea, holding only about 2,000 passengers. They're built in the mid to late 90s and they're older and more intimate type of ship. These are great for relaxing. The refurbished last year and while they don't have all the bells and whistles of some of the newer ships, they're loved for their more relaxed pace and glass panoramic vistas. This class of ship is chosen for its itineraries rather than the ship's features. We think that there are other ships in the fleet that are better suited for people looking for a more active holiday and in particular those with children. Now moving on for the Vision class, let's take a look at the Voyager class of ship. The Voyager class of ship are huge and these were built in their early 90s to late noughties. They hold around 4,000 passengers and they have a royal promenade full with shops, bars and places to eat, plus with many of the features of the newer ships. They've also been updated over the last few years. These ships are an excellent all-rounder ship, providing lots of entertainment including an ice rink, mini golf, along with the floor rider and climbing wall. These ships are really ideal for families. Now let's take a look at the Radiance class of ship. The Radiance class hold around 2,100 passengers and these ships are built in the early to mid noughties. These ships are known for being beautiful and a lot more elegant. Filled with glass walls so that you never forget that you're sailing, these are perfect for Alaska and scenic cruising. They're a slightly smaller ship so they're easy to get around with less queuing in lines than the Voyager and the Freedom class can experience. They don't have a Royal Promenade but they still feature many of the staple features of the newer ships, along with their own features such as themed dining rooms and a vertical theatre for an aerialist shore. If you're attracted to a more active cruise, the Voyager, Freedom or the newer classes may be a better choice. They also have a pool with a retracting roof meaning that you can enjoy the poolside facilities, whatever the weather. So the Freedom class are basically a lengthened version of the Voyager class. The Freedom class was built in the mid to late noughties and they hold around 4,500 passengers. They're packed with most of the same entertainment features of the Voyager class, as well as a boxing rink, hitch to ozone and cantilevered whirlpools. These ships are perfect for families, as well as active couples and more mature travellers. Now we're going to take a look at the Oasis class of ship. The Oasis class is the largest class in the world and these beasts hold around 5,500 passengers. They were built from 2009 up to last year. The ships are huge and we don't feel this would be the best choice for those looking for a relaxing or more traditional cruise. They're brilliant however for more active people looking for fun and in particular those with kids. There are more places to eat than there are possible on the days of your cruise and they're filled with cutting edge technology such as zip lines, massive water parks ice rinks and a bionic bar. They also have massive indoor and outdoor theatres and a five deck neighbourhood area like the Boardwalk and Central Park. Size however does come at a price and you need reservations for almost everything so if you want to eat somewhere special you need to have that reserved. However if you're organised this isn't going to be a problem. Do expect long lines though on these ships. Now we're going to take a look at Royal Caribbean's newest class of ship which is the Quantum class. So the Quantum class are the newest class and they were built in the last few years and these hold around 4,200 passengers. Equally as huge and with many of the same features as the Oasis class, these ships are packed with bars, restaurants and shopping. There is so much to do on these ships. These ships also include the iFly by Ripcord, the North Star, Dodgems and roller skating at sea as well as two gorgeous indoor solariums. These are really cutting edge ships with touch screens and the latest technology. You need to make reservations for almost everything, but if you're prepared, that's not going to be a problem. These ships are great for families, fun-loving couples, as well as groups. Now, let's move on and talk about some of Royal Caribbean's destinations. Unlike the name suggests, Royal have cruises all around the world. They do have a good selection of cruises in the Caribbean, with loads of cruises going daily, but they have um, cruises that go from Europe, 
Australia, Asia, the Norwegian fjords, which are beautiful, and also Alaska. There's a good selection for everyone. So the main dining rooms, along with a number of quick service restaurants, are all included in the price. And of course, along with the buffet as well, which you can't miss. Some room service items are free, but others have a charge. Royal offer the largest range of specialty extra paid dining. From Janie Oliver to Japanese cuisine, they have something to suit every single taste. You also have the choice of a more traditional set time dining or the Royal Caribbean's Mai time. This is fantastic. We really enjoy this because you can literally just turn up to the restaurant whenever you want. You're not set to the standard normal times. Formal nights change depending on the number of nights, with two normally happening on a seven night cruise. There are some restaurants where formal wear is not required if you don't really fancy dressing up. This is great. You can just go to the buffet or one of the quick service dining restaurants. During the day, it's always casual dress. Entertainment is really in abundance on Royal Caribbean ships, and this is where we feel that Royal Caribbean really do shine. From Broadway shows such as Grease, Cats and We Will Rock You, live music fills all the entertainment venues across the ships. There's also more traditional activities such as quizzes, and you can also spend a bit of cash in the casino. There's always lots of outdoor space with different sports on offer, and depending on the ship, features such as the floor rider, climbing wall, ice rink and outdoor theatres. Most ships also feature multiple pools as well as multiple hot tubs, so there's always tons of space that you can go and catch rays on. There are fantastic kids clubs for kids aged 3 and above, with plenty to do for kids and teens of all ages. The newer and the larger ships really are catered for kids. It's really impossible to be bored on these ships. We find that there's just so many activities to do whatever time of the day. So the cabins are about the same size from ship to ship, but some of the older class of ships do have smaller cabins. We've always been really pleased with our cabins. We just find that Royal Caribbean re make really good use of the space, so you have tons of storage and the decor is so nice and welcoming. Next up, Ben's going to tell you about what is included and what is not included on your cruise. So main dining is included in the price of your cruise, along with the selection of teas, coffees, water and juices. Drinks packages can be bought beforehand or whilst on the cruise, but we recommend that you buy them before you get on because they usually work out a little bit cheaper. Oh, don't mind if I do. So the drinks packages range all the way from the classic soda package, including fountain soda drinks. This package comes in at $8.50 per person per day, but does not include gratuities. The refreshment package, including premium teas, bottled water, non-alcoholic cocktails and freshly squeezed juices. This costs $26 per person per day, also not including gratuities. Then you've got the most expensive deluxe beverage package, including unlimited beer, wine and cocktails up to the value of $12. This costs $55 per person per day and also doesn't include any gratuities. These prices do change and depend on your cruise and where you're sailing, so they're just a guide. Evian bottled water packages are also available to buy. There's no charges for most of the facilities, including things like entertainment, floor rider and the climbing wall, but you can purchase extra sessions for an extra cost. Kids clubs and entertainment are also included in the price. Speciality dining ranges anywhere from $4.95 for a Johnny Rockets burger all the way up to $75, depending on the restaurant. Internet can also be purchased on board with packages ranging from about $9.99. This depends on the type of cruise and the ship that you're sailing on. As with all other mainstream cruise liners, excursions are not included in the price. There'll be a wide range available for your cruise and it comes in at all different price points. Gratuities are not included either. At the time of filming, they're working out at $13.50 per person per night for those not staying in a suite category room, and $16.50 per night per person for those staying in a suite. Okay, next we're gonna have a look at what we liked and what we didn't like. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the things that we liked and some of the things that we maybe didn't like so much on Royal Caribbean. So for you, what was maybe one of the things that you liked? Yeah, the thing that I loved on board was the flexibility of it all. So there was no set time dinings if you didn't want it. Yeah. You could just go and eat whenever you wanted, which was just brilliant. So you weren't ever stuck to doing things at a certain time. If you wanted to spend a little longer getting ready or didn't fancy eating at that specific time, you could go a little bit later or yeah. earlier. Like thinking about what I would have thought what cruising was before I went on a cruise, I would have thought it was so regimented and everybody was all posh and dressed up. And yeah. But it's nothing like that at all. It's so laid back and... It's just so nice. It's hard to explain if you've not been on a cruise before. And the other thing that the thing that I really like is just how much there is to do on these ships. Yeah. Because um, I'm not a type of person where I can lay by a pool all day. I mean, if you are, that's fine. That's that that's 
they, they do have that as well. Their uh -huh. pool areas are fantastic. Yeah, we've been we've been on cruises where we've had two or three sea days in a row, and they've put on one activity a day. Yeah, at, with at different five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but with, with Royal, there. you look at their cruise guide, and there's, there's things going on every two minutes, yeah. which is great. You've got you've got uh, quizzes. Um, you have activities, you Game have shows. yeah, comedy shows, live music, everything. It's it's literally there's so much to do. You can't get bored. It'd be crazy if you did. No, you really can't. The staff have always been really friendly with us. Yeah, absolutely loved them. It's been really good. So, um, some of the things that maybe we didn't like so much, um, probably the food in the main dining rooms. Yeah, we don't think the food in the main dining rooms was no. as good quality as some other liners. But that's probably because they have so many speciality dining options and they obviously want to push us to go eat, eat there. Yeah, and they're not all like really expensive. You can get like a burger for $5, which is like yeah. next to nothing really. Exactly. You're not paying like a full price. Like that's not the price you'd pay on land. You'd probably pay a lot more for Oh what you my get God, you'd take an example for Wonderland, the, the crazy the, restaurant yeah. with the magical food and everything. You'd literally pay hundreds of pounds for yeah. that here, wouldn't you? So exactly. when you're only paying a small addition, it's it really is worth it, isn't it? Yeah, just like, just the decor in that place is awesome. But the thing is, though, this is another damn side. Like, you have to have reservations for everything on yep. some of the ships. So, like, it would be hard to get a reservation for Wonderland if, say, you wanted to book it while you're on the cruise. So you need to be really well prepared for some of these things if you want to enjoy all of the restaurants that you've chosen. Yeah, and particularly like the new, like when we were on the newest Quantum class, which is Ovation of the Seas, is you actually have to have reservations for the main dining rooms. Yeah. And we couldn't get any because um, it was only three night cruise and it was a very last minute booking. Yeah. Um, so we actually struggled to get a reservation for quite a lot of stuff. But then again, that was our fault. We were we were badly organised. We weren't yeah. expecting to go on this cruise that, that short notice. So if you are organised and prepared, it's exactly. not going to be a problem at all, is it? So. And as I think with other like on other cruise lines where we haven't got reservations, yeah, just ask. Like, exactly. Yeah, turn up know. before there might be cancellations. You yeah, never know. Or go so. to customer services, and I'm pretty sure they'll do everything they can to to get a reservation for you. Yeah, I mean, but the biggest thing overall was the amount of range of people that they had on board these cruises. We've been yeah. a few now with them and it's just a massive range of people. So you don't feel out of place. There's no. people from every background, every place in the world. It's every just, age range. Yeah, every age range. It's it's it, You just feel really comfortable, don't you? Which was really good. Well, that's another thing about when you say what people think about cruising. So it's got such a stereotype new, about it. The newly it. wed and the nearly dead. That yeah, is exactly. completely it's not. It's so rubbish, yeah. Cruising now is so modern and we, we've got to say we were really skeptical about going on our first yeah. cruise and now we are literally hooked. I couldn't even yeah. think of going on another different type of holiday at the moment could you yep. and Royal Caribbean yeah. has all types of people and we'd say something for everybody exactly okay so David's now going to look at uh, comparisons with some of the cruise liners and see what uh, how it compares with them so who do we think Royal Caribbean's for well it's really hard to specifically say who they're for because they offer such a wide range of ships and itineraries so depending on the type of ship and on the itinerary you could attract a completely different crowd but we've put together a comparison chart just to kind of give you an idea of generally what you can expect on board a Royal Caribbean ship. So in terms of where it is between active and relaxing, they are really an all-rounder. The newer ships are much more active types of ships. They have much more activities, but if you still do like to lounge by the pool, they still have the facilities for that as well. And Royal Caribbean really are a modern cruise liner. They really push the boundaries in terms of technology and just the general feel on board is a much more modern feel. And the type of people on board, well, it, again, it's an all-rounder. Some of the older ships and some of the different, some of the itineraries, sorry, such as Alaska and the longer itineraries tend to draw a more mature crowd. Whereas the bigger, newer ships and the itineraries such as the Caribbean tend to draw a much younger crowd. And they are really great as well for families. The bigger ships really suited for kids of all ages. They have great uh, kids clubs and they're re really well with teens and tweens. So let's compare this to two of the cruise lines. So here we have Celebrity Cruises and Norwegian Cruise Line. And we're just going to give you an idea of how they compare to these two. So we think NCL is the most similar to Royal Caribbean. They really are an active cruise liner. And whereas Celebrity Cruises, we say are much more relaxing. NCL again, very modern and Celebrity would say a much more traditional cruise. They just have a much more traditional flair. That's not to say though that their ships are not modern ships. And the type of people you're going to get on board, well, NCL, a much younger crowd, you get a lot of young couples, you get a lot of groups on board, whereas Celebrity Cruises are a much more traditional crowd, so a much more mature, a much more, much more mature crowd, they have more couples on board. 
And in terms of families on board, well, we'd say NCL are not as good for families as Royal Caribbean, particularly for the younger kids, um, but they're great for teens and tweens, whereas Celebrity Cruises, you're going to get a much more adult crowd on board, but during the school holidays they do attract multi-generational families and they do still have kids clubs. So overall, who do we think Royal Caribbean's for? Well, they're a great all-rounder cruise line. The more traditional and smaller and older ships are great for more couples and older travellers, whereas the newer ships, the bigger ships and the shorter itineraries we think are great for families and more active travels. Okay guys, that's it this week for our video about Royal Caribbean. Yeah, thanks for watching. Join us next time when we're going to be telling you what to pack and what not to pack. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, please just pop them in the comment section below. And please don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, happy, happy cruising! cruising.